Good morning. Ciao. Buongiorno. Buenos dias. How are you out there? My name is not Martin Scorsese. My name is Dino V and welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe and all that jazz because it does help me. Does it? I don't know. Anyway, um, please comment below. Do you like my t-shirt? Stamp out the Beatles. Yeah. D is it DDT kills the Beatles or kills the Beatles? Look, nice little base there and a brilliant book there called The Beatles Conquer America by Mr. Dizo Hoffman, who's like the Beatles official photographer. And he captured the Beatles early in 64 when they went to Paris, but also when they went to America, which is what we're going to be talking about now, because it's just been announced that on November the 29th, streaming on the Disney channel will be Beatles 64. So it's a documentary about the Beatles in February 64. They were there from, I think it's the 7th was it until the 20th. Second, so, so that's, that's roughly what seven two weeks, isn't it? In the United States, Beatlemania arrived in America, it already conquered the UK, um, it had been in France, it had actually been in Sweden the year before. But this was about America, and um, they were ready for the Fab Four, but in a way, I don't think they expected it to be on such a scale that it was very, very exciting, which the UK had already experienced for many, many months. And that was America's term. These four scruffy mophead lads from Liverpool with smart clothes, funny hair, funny accents, went over there to show them what they were all about. And they didn't flop, did they? You may have seen um, a lot of it was filmed. It was agreed by Brian Epstein. It was filmed by these chaps here. The males, these brothers, can you see them just there? So those chaps, they followed the Beatles around. And thank goodness that Brian Epstein let them do it because they captured stuff which without them filming there'd have only been little clips for example there's many press and photographers media at the airport when they touch down in jfk airport and international airport in new york so when they arrived there were lots there but there weren't anyone wasn't anyone else filming when they arrived was at the plaza hotel so you, you may have seen the footage on this four, the brilliant video here the beatles first u.s to visit now, I'm intrigued um, by what is not on this that we are going to get by this latest Disney stream starting on November the 29th. It doesn't say in the, the press handout how long it's going to last for, but there will be footage we've never seen. If you haven't got this, buy it. If you haven't got it and you're watching this, I really don't understand why. Unless, of course, it's on YouTube or other channels. So on here, um, let's have a look here. He says, trying to read what it says. I can't read this without my glasses. Right. The feature is 81 minutes on this. And extras is 51 minutes. Eight and five and third. So that's just over two hours worth of stuff on here. I believe you've got the Males' Brothers talking about it on here. But as I say, it's absolutely phenomenal. And what you get on here, he says, going to have a look on the back of the Beatles US visit. So you've got um, the, Be the making of the Beatles' first US visit chapters. The Beatles are coming. Ringo, George and John phone home. Under siege at the hotel. Live in your living room. Relaxing at the Peppermint Lounge. You see the bit where, who does it gets up? Is it George or is it Ringo? Gets Ringo has a good old dance, doesn't he? They head for Washington. You may have seen, they were supposed to fly from New York to Washington, but ended up going on the train. But the hotel stuff's fascinating. For example, Brian Bath tubes there. Uh, sorry, Brian Bath. <laughs> Brian Epstein's there. Brian Bath tube, or as in Brian Matthew, rings because he does the Beatles shows back in the UK on BBC Radio. And um, various people are calling. You've got Brian Epstein there and his secretary. What was his secretary called? Wendy or Judy? She, she's there and they're going to leave as i say um new york and head to washington by train you've seen the snow and ice and you've probably seen where ringo didn't know what town or city was in so it's very very exciting and you, you, you see three of them go to um central park as well george wasn't where i was being cared for by his sister louise and they're, they're in the the back of a, a car and then um, they got the radio on it says they're going to be doing poetry and paul says i really know poetry so you may have seen all that um the people that were involved in the making of this, this new one Beatles 64 are uh, Martin Scorsese who was also involved in um the George Harrison Mater Living in the Material World brilliant not Living in the Material was it just called Material World 
DVD, Blu-ray, um, um, how should I say, not a tribute to his life, but basically it's all about George, yeah, it's from the beginning till the end, but it's not really the end, is it, because we know George is up there watching, now. I wonder what he's thinking up there watching this for his lotus flowers, I wonder what he's thinking, lotus leaves, isn't it? Anyway, uh, Martin Scorsese is involved in it, um, as in David Tedeschi, who as well. It's been um, demixed by Wingnut, which is Peter Jackson's company, I believe, over in New Zealand. So they've cleared the sound and it's been remixed by Jarvis Martin, um, who's done many, many Beatles projects, all, all the Beatles uh, deluxe box sets over the last few years. So, and worked on now and then. Don't start. Don't start. I miss you. So it's a great team working on it. And I was thinking this. It's very interesting that Giles Martin now is um, remixed something. And I was just thinking back to his brilliant father that worked on virtually every Beatles recording made. And when the Hollywood Bowl concerts recorded in 64 and 65 never got released. And George Martin um, he cleaned up to release the Hollywood Bowl album in 77. I think as things like... He said it was on tape and they had pencils um, turning the tape round. They had a hairdryer because some of it was a bit damp or wet. How technology has moved on. So it would be fascinating to hear um, how it all sounds and looks. Because besides the brilliant Beatles US uh, first US visit, which was available a few years ago, you can also buy um, the, the Ed Sullivan show. This includes the two in 64 and the ones in 65. Um, so you've got um, the Beatles, they film it in New York. Now, is it Washington? Was it Washington and Miami? So I do get confused with this stuff. But in here, you've got the Ed Sullivan shows in 64. And as far as I know, it's all the tracks on here that were recorded. <coughs> Excuse me. I expect what we will have as well on um, the Disney stream will be this. The complete Washington, D.C., concert was at the Coliseum on February 11th 1964 so look forward to seeing that cleaned up it will be interesting to see how the instruments sound because you probably you might have a copy of this and you've seen stuff on the anthology as well but how cleaned up it is and how the instruments have been separated and the footage how it's been cleaned up for example how many cameras filmed stuff like the Washington DC concert I know we've, we've got them um, that's an awful picture there um, of the DC concert. But are there zoom-ins on their faces which weren't used? So it is going to be fascinating to see. One thing, looking into this, um, when I was doing a little bit of research, I don't do too much research, otherwise by the time I've done the research, it, it's old news and I never get the video out. But what I was thinking was, the Beatles did a gig, or was it two gigs at Carnegie Hall? I was looking into this, because I do look into things. Wednesday the 12th of February, the Beatles um, travelled to New York and they played at, the Car played at the Carnegie Hall 7.45 and 11.15. Really? They, they did one that late at night. Capacity of audience of 2,900 each. And a plan by Capitol Records to record the two shows was thwarted by the American Federation of Musicians with greater time to solve the union problems. I want to know if Carnegie was actually filmed and was never allowed to be broadcast, as in video-wise and audio-wise. I guess not, but it'd be brilliant to see a Carnegie show, which, as far as I know, none of us have ever seen, because it probably doesn't exist. So we're going to get the Washington, D.C. one. I guess we're going to get... Um, Ed Sullivan shows. Another thing what I like is when um, they did the dress rehearsal um, for the Ed Sullivan show, because George wasn't well, you may see pictures. There's a person that worked with the film company there, <clears throat> stood in. I think he had a, a wig on as well, um, took the place of George just holding the guitar, and Neil Aspinall. Were these filmed? Were the dress rehearsals filmed? That's what I'd really love to see. <clears throat> I'm not super excited at going to see the Ed Sullivan shows um, again, or the Washington DC, unless the quality and sound is phenomenal. What I'm always fascinated in seeing, but probably like you, is unseen footage. Um, whether in the car and arriving at the hotel, you've seen the girls banging against the window like this, terrifying them all. Um, stuff from Central Park, is there a lot of stuff we haven't seen from there at the Peppermint Lounge? Is there more stuff on the train which we haven't seen? That train journey is hilarious where 
um, George Harrison um, dresses up as kind of like a, a ticket guy, doesn't he? Puts the hat on and you've got all the press and photographers on there. It really captures their great sense of humour and the excitement they're going through. And um, I guess there was a bit of worry that will they be successful in the States? Well, they were, weren't they? I hope, I hope it's better than this. Now, what's wrong with this? Nothing brilliant, but it, this... What I find disappointing in, about this is it's eight days a week, the touring is. But to me, this is my personal opinion, put in your comments below what you think. It's basically about touring America. And I know that's where the money is and that's where the big tours are and they made more money. You've got Shea Stadium, you've got the massive concerts. But it doesn't really touch on too much on all the British concerts that they did. Um, Japan, that's what I'd like to see the least. Yeah, let's, let's have a go at Apple, shall we? Let's have a go at Apple. Unless we're waiting for anniversaries like we're doing all the time. It's 1964. We've got the white vinyl coming out of A Hard Day's Night. Originally issued in 64. Not on white vinyl, but the album and the film. So we're not getting the film being reissued on Blu-ray or, or colourised. I'd like to see it colourised. That's me. We've got the Beatles' first few US albums coming out as well. Cause it's celebrating 1964. Nothing on Beatles for sale at all. Not one idly goofy squinch, whatever that means. So if that's the anniversary of 64, and it was a big thing, um, going to America, conquering America, becoming the biggest band on the planet, then no, they were untouchable. Well, not untouchable, but nobody could touch them. And so February 64 was so, so important. Obviously, they, when they left America, it was big news in the UK. Even a sports program was interrupted news. The Beatles have arrived home, and there's thousands of, of fans at the airport waiting to see them. Not long after they started doing the Hard Day's night film. So 65 is next year and we're not getting Rubber Soul this year and we're not getting help. What about da, 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 Shea Stadium? <laughs> what about Shea Stadium? I'm not moaning. I always like it when there's new Beatles stuff and I don't decide if I'm going to um, pay the Disney subscription for one month to subscribe, which I did for the, the Beatles Get Back and it was worth it. And then it came out on Blu-ray. Me personally, I'd like to own, I like to own stuff, not stream. I don't stream music. I like to physically own things. So I'd rather, rather than having Beatles 64, I'd rather have had Shea Stadium. Possibly we're going to get a Beatles 65 box set next year. Maybe with Shea Stadium uh, getting the same treatment from Wingnut as in video and audio. And maybe that's going to be in a rubber sole and help box set. Who knows? So if we've got Beatles 64 now. I hope there's a Beatles 65 with a Shea Stadium concert on <clears throat> because it's what we want. Anyway, looking forward to it. Not super looking forward to it. Um, but 64, every year was important for the Beatles, wasn't it? Starting in 57, I suppose. Or you could start in 1940 when um, John and Ringo were born. So, um, yeah, Beatles 64 coming out November the 29th. Disney, I probably will pay. I said the other day, I'm not paying to watch it, but... I have to, don't I? I've got to watch it. Just maybe like you guys. There's a lot of people saying I don't like Disney. I totally understand it. I'm not a, a fan of the Disney Corporation. But it seems now if you want to watch something on the Beatles, <laughs> you have to subscribe for Disney. What is strange is because it's later on in the year now. Well, it, in November the 29th. I can't see it being released on Blu-ray or DVD in time for Christmas. So maybe next year. So Beatles 64 coming out November the 29th. It will be fascinating to watch. I hope there's lots of unseen footage. I hope Carnegie Hall's on it. And I hope we're blown away with everything that we see. What are your thoughts? What are your comments? Are you looking forward to it? Are you going to subscribe to um, the Disney Channel? Um, thank you for watching this. Um, like and um, subscribe, as I say. Um, the great thing is, because I've only got two followers, there's no adverts in there. And you know Beatley Town? I was watching Beatley Town the other day. In fact, I got confused the other day. I put two legs on because they had a, a video on sorry they, they had a what i forgot what you called they had a, a youtube um podcast on and they had owen ling owen ling long long lingy long long on it and when it started yeah it started with Beatley town hello everyone this is Beatley town with his two legs t-shirt on this isn't Beatley town but this is two legs with andy and tom watch it I forgot where I was going now. I've, I've kind of lost that, but it did confuse me. I actually stopped the video. I thought I wanted to watch Two Legs, not Beatley Town. <laughs> Beatley Town wants adverts, and he wants. I don't know if you're aware, but Beatley Town's going to start having adverts um, doing dog food. He likes dogs, and he wants to adverts on dog food. So I'm going to see if I can do a dog food advert for 
beatly tone to put in. Is that right, tone? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean, tone? You know we love you, really. Take care. Beatles 64 coming. It's going to be <coughs> fab. Oh, sorry, babe. Sorry about that. Anyway, this is Dino V saying goodbyes to you all. As you get to America, turn left at Greenham. Ciao.